These are things that I use to cope. <laughs> walnuts! <laughs> Books and walnuts! <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back. Today, we are going to be doing a makeup playtime. It is an opportunity for me to reuse things that I have been using on my channel or just reviewed to show them in a different way as I've gotten more experience with them. But also, I have some stuff that's like first and second impressions that I haven't gotten a chance to form my thoughts on for review and it's just a sneak peek at seeing how some of these things perform and some of the stuff that will be coming up in reviews on my channel and this time I'm kind of throwing it back to like some of the older get ready with me's because I went on my Instagram stories and I asked you guys for like topics to talk about or questions that you want me to talk about so we might get to those if we have time. The one thing that I want to make sure that I do today is I want to get kind of spooky on my eyes. I really want to chase that mood that I went in in the last video and I'm going to make sure that this is the one thing that I prioritize and that is the Isamea palette. And I want to show you guys how this works with the LH Cosmetics Shimmer Saga on top. I have also some like new stuff that I ordered from Sephora. This is the Coolfi new brand at Sephora, but it is a concealer. I also have the new Tula skin tint. I'm, I will locate it in a moment. I got the new Merit bronzer. I have a Merit lipstick. Again, not all of this is going to make it onto my face today, but I have a bunch, I just have a bunch of stuff. I just have a bunch of stuff. So let's go ahead and jump in. You're gonna, you're gonna do one of these for the moment. Snake it a bit me. Y'all, it was sitting right in front of me. So I did pick up the Tula Radiant Skin Brightening Serum Skin Tint. This is a sunscreen, raw spectrum, SPF 30. The reason that I picked this up is, well, you guys requested it after I anti-hauled it, which is totally, you know, within <laughs> within the expectation of my channel. If I anti-haul something and you guys say, no, I really want you to review that, like, I will. The thing here is that I got a little too light of a shade. I got the shade 01. And um, it's really, really light, but <laughs> I'm going to mix it with my... <laughs> this is the way this video is going to be, I guess. The Fenty Body Sauce. I have this in Pearl Swirl, and I'm just going to do one of those. So, another update here. On... Oh, that's nice. Huh. Another update on my health situation. If you haven't been in my last couple of videos or on my Instagram stories lately, that is just so pretty, isn't it? Wow. It, I had a really long period, almost a month, 26 days, but I woke up today and it has abated for at least today so far. So cross your fingers for me. Still don't know what's wrong and I'm still going to, you know, go through with all of my tests and stuff at the doctor's office. That wasn't really quite enough product, I don't think. Once we get concealer on and everything, it'll be fine. But for the moment, it has taken a lot of anxiety off of me just to have that particular symptom go away because honestly, I was really whipping myself into a froth, like getting super freaked out that something like was hugely, hugely wrong. So I should say though, I really incredibly so much outrageously appreciate just the kind words and the support that I've gotten from people who, you know, used it as the opportunity, the first opportunity to comment ever or send me a DM or a comment ever where they said something like, you know, I have had the same symptoms. Here was what the issue was. It really freaked me out, but it didn't end up being that much to worry about things like that. And I just want to say, I appreciate you because, you know, there's finding a solution and that's ideal, right? But a really, really big part of it is not feeling alone. That's the way I think anything is like that. And it's just, this community helps me not feel alone. And I appreciate that so much because I am actually literally alone <laughs> in this room. So, at least to my knowledge, I, Bruce might be behind the mirror, but he is not very supportive. <laughs> he just takes and takes and takes. So, not exactly an ideal review, obviously, because that is Tula and it's mixed together with the Fenty and the Fenty has that wonderful blurred finish to it and just a nice color cancellation quality because it's such a neutral tone and it adds opacity. And I will say that the Tula has been so sheer that the light color doesn't seem to really matter that much. It's kind of like the Tower 28 in that sense where it's like, it spreads out so sheerly, I can pretty much make it work no matter what. And it is a little lighter weight and a little bit dewier I'm not lighter weight, lighter coverage, and a little bit dewier than the Tower 28 so far in my experience. I do think that my original assessment is probably true, and that is that it's just a skin tint. 
it's a good skin tint, but it is just a skin tint. There's nothing particularly special about it. It's not a like run, do not walk situation. Okay, let's open up my questions here and see if you guys submitted anything. All right, so I asked for questions and also topics. So the first one that came in says more of a topic, putting yourself on the internet when you know mean slash bad faith comments are inevitable. So while I answer that, we're gonna start in with this. This is called the Main Match Concealer from Cool Fee and I got the shade Ice Ice Berry. This reminds me a lot so far. I've just like swatched it and I used it one time last night and just applied it with my fingers, but it reminds me of my memory of the Fit Glow Concealer because it's very intensely pigmented, a little bit more emollient than something like the Kosas, but it has that kind of hydrating, oily presence to it. Plus, look at that color. It's a great color. Not particularly light. It's like a much better, closer to a shade match for me, but it is so high coverage, <laughs> which is great because that thing is, it's still making itself known. My hormones are obviously freaking out. Like suddenly I've noticed, cause I, I keep tabs on my own face, more probably so than a lot of people do because I'm looking at myself in the mirror so much, so all the time watching myself on video. But like, I feel like I have more of a consistent trail of hair from my hairline to my eyebrows than I ever have before. And this is also, when you break out down here, it's a sign of like hormonal issues and sort of that goatee or like, chin strap area. So that plus my weird period would seem to all suggest that something very, very strange is going on with my hormones. I can't wait to find out what it is. <laughs> just, just wrapped in anticipation. So as far as putting yourself online, when you know that like people are going to come to you with like bad faith assumptions and like I think that assumption is actually the right word because a lot of times it's like they've taken enough out of context to have confirmation bias of an assumption that they want to make about you that makes them feel better about whatever insecurity they feel absorbing your content taking your content in and you can't control other people you know all you can do is be the most sincere version of yourself so if you don't like want to incur any kind of criticism, then don't put yourself online, you know? You're going to incur criticism, but I really function by, I'm going to paraphrase, but the Eleanor Roosevelt quote where she's like, people are going to trash you either way. Like follow your heart. You gotta do what's right for you so that at the end of the day, you're proud of what you did because like whether you do what you wanna do or whether you do what they tell you to do, someone's going to hate on you. That would be the <laughs> updated to 2022 <laughs> interpretation of a, a very different quote by Eleanor Roosevelt. So yeah, I, I do. I think that it really comes down to being humble enough to absorb what someone's saying and size that up against your opinion of yourself and say like, is there a shred of truth here? Or is this being misinterpreted because a person is choosing to see me through a lens that is more beneficial to their worldview? And if that's the case, there's really nothing you can do about it. And that person is kind of going through something that I hate to be like super crass, but it's kind of like their problem to solve. They need to look at themselves. And I always say as far as like protecting my feelings, because sure, there's vulnerability when it comes to wanting to take in comments and be self-critical enough that you can ask yourself if there is a shred of truth to it. You know, it's like if someone says something about my content and I'm just like, ouch, that hurts. Does it hurt because I feel like they misunderstood me or because they're kind of right, even if they said it in like a kind of cruel tone, there has to be that level, level of vulnerability, but you don't have to be so vulnerable that you allow everything like all the way into your heart. And I think that you can sense when someone is coming to a conversation in bad faith. And that just means that they're asking you a question because they have something to say not because they really want an answer from you. They really just need to make their point and be heard. And if that's the case, I just don't usually validate that with a response. That person got whatever it was that they need to get out of their system, out into the world, and my response doesn't really matter. It's not gonna change their mind, you know? So sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I don't like being perceived as a person who is afraid of difficult questions, but there is a difference between a difficult question that's like, you know, 
new, the answer is nuanced versus a difficult question in the sense that there's no right answer for that person. <laughs> like they don't want a right answer, they just want to say their piece, you know? And I make that sound very simple, but every single time it's a little bit different and it can really hit you sideways sometimes when you're not expecting it. Because people will say things where you're like, whoa, I had no idea that that's how my actions were being perceived. I don't know yet how it wears long term, but that is such a pretty concealer. The one thing is it's a funny shade range. It doesn't really have a lot of shades in it at all. And so I'm glad that I have a shade that I like in it so that I can test in it, but I huh, test it, but I hope that they expand the shade range. But like, I dig that a lot. I love how hydrating it is. I love how emollient it is. I'm hoping that it makes it so that like, blemishes like this don't start to like crack up over the day. I, I like my skin likes just like consistent hydration. <laughs> I love, this is such a lighter question. Double-ended brushes. I am so confused and put off by them. Store them in a cup. All I can say is I completely agree. I have like one double-ended brush that came with something and I, I, I hate it. They're so dumb. You can't store them. Like you can put them in a drawer maybe, but like, yeah, I store my brushes in cups. And so they don't, they just don't serve a purpose. All right, let's now go in with this Merit bronzer. Where did it go? There it is, <laughs> right in front of me. Okay, so we're gonna go in with this Merit bronzer and I'm opening this very, very gingerly because when I got it, it had smashed itself into the cap. There we go. Yeah, and I'm shocked by how flimsy this is. This feels like drugstore. This feels like Milani. And I love Milani's products, but they're, you know, their packaging is where they cut corners, not the formulas. This is, this is really, really not merit, merit quality, you know, especially cause I picked this lipstick up and it is like bougie as heck. Like there is just something so chintzy about this little lid. It's, ugh, I don't like it. I don't like how it feels. Anyway, it's supposed to be this very like, you know, sensuous shape and everything, but mine was smashed in there and I kind of handled it like this and put it back and tapped it down in there and sort of ruined the experience for myself. But that's fine. It's kind of like if my child did the same thing. So I'm going to apply this with a brush. I'm not going to put this directly on my face because I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. And this is super sheer. I would liken it almost to the Makeup by Mario, but it's even a little bit dewier than that. The Makeup by Mario one is kind of mattifying. It's supposed to be more of like a perfected, perfecter, enhancer, I don't know, guys, kind of finish. And this is definitely more of like a neutral, neutral? Natural skin finish. Apparently I am not caffeinated enough trying to think about too many things at once. I could see it being something I use all year because it's so sheer and so easy to control. But at the same time, I don't know yet how it's gonna wear. Cause it does, it's just a little bit like, I don't wanna say glossy. It's just, there's not a lot of pigment to it. So I feel like I put a lot on in order to get color payoff. So back up a little bit. It's nice though. I like the color. I got the color. It could either be quince or quince. I don't know. No say. <laughs> so we're gonna do my eyes first while we answer some questions and topics. And then I'll choose my blushes and stuff like that. Tips for crawling out of a depression hole. Every medication I've tried makes me sick. So I'm gonna try and keep this as general as possible so that I'm not triggering anybody. But you know, I've been through this <laughs> many, many times. I definitely suffer from, you know, chronic depression and anxiety and things like that. And sometimes it's caused by a, a true external force. And sometimes it's just chemicals, like in your brain. I need to find a brush. We're going green. This is something I've been promising you guys for so long. We're going to go green with a little bit of gold. I'm gonna try and like take green and bring it into this look and we will we will go on this journey together and we will hope that it works. So tips, right? <laughs> tips for this. I mean it's it's an entire science for a reason. <laughs> and I first of all I want to extend my sentiments as far as just I'm really sorry you're going through this. Like I'm really sorry that 
that you're suffering with that because it is really hard and it, it's kind of a snake eating its tail because like for me, a lot of times, the symptoms begin to then drive more depression. I would say that like short term, you can do things like, you know, exercising and just making yourself, like forcing yourself to do things that you know you would typically like to do that are gonna make you feel better. Something that's huge is not letting myself fall into really unhealthy patterns of like drinking too much and stuff because that's only going to throw your chemicals off worse. So, you know, I'm not saying like, don't ever enjoy anything ever again. Don't ever indulge in anything ever again, but be mindful of the things that you do have control over, I guess is all that I'm saying. By the way, I am just using the most saturated kind of deep green here. I'm not sure how it's going. <laughs> it's looking a little bit sick. So I'm gonna go with this kind of green gold on top. But long term, if you don't have access to therapy and the medications aren't really helping you and they make you sick, there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of really great books. I've always found self-help books to be, I know that they're, you know, they have a, a trope attached to them, right? But I have never felt any particular shame in a self-help book because I always like the idea that someone who, hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed, has some education on a topic and or has been through it in one way or another, maybe, you know, first hand or second hand or both. All I have to do is pick that book up and read it cover to cover and I'm going to make progress on my issue. And it gives me something to occupy myself with. So it's not just like, you know, the outcome is going to be revealed at the end when I'm done. It actually has progress all the way through. And some of the, you know, best self-help authors and books that I've read, I mean, I started when I was in one of the deepest depressions of my life. I started with uh, Brene Brown's daring greatly. It's going to teach you why you've been conditioned to doubt yourself so much, how to overcome the actions and the, the cycles that we have created in ourselves due to shame that we have felt because of like society's pressures and how to like re-channel that energy into feeling like when you try, and you fail, what counted was that you tried instead of what counted was that you failed. And I think that it also helps you cut other people in your life a lot more slack. And it's a book that I, you know, I like to reread. I also, it's not really a self-help book per se. It's kind of posing as a self-help book. She even says this, but it's not really, is um, How to Do Nothing. It's an amazing study on the ways we don't even realize because it's kind of like a uh, boiling a frog. We don't realize how social media and the attention economy have taken so much control over our lives and how to start taking it back, especially as millennials. I think that millennials are the first generation that really can say, can like, you know, put like a date, <laughs> you know, or a year where it's like, oh, okay, here's where my life changed 2007 when the first iPhone came out or whatever around then and say like, this is where I stopped being bored as a pastime and started being distracted as a pastime. And the number that that can do on your ability to concentrate, on your ability to enjoy things, on your ability to be creative. And that those are all the things that like are, they're not grand gestures, they're these like small particles of happiness and like what can bring you happiness and self-worth. And that those things have been eroded over time by these things that kind of feed on our basest instincts, like don't shame yourself for that. They just feed on our basest instincts and we end up being more prone to distraction than the difficult thing, which is to kind of sit with ourselves and allow something to come from nothing. So, you know, touch grass. <laughs> That's another thing, go touch grass. Seriously, I know that that's such like a, again, hot girl walks, touch grass, like it's it's another sort of trope at this point and like none of this is going to be in and of itself medicine for your healing, but it, it can help. And also, I don't know, I read recently that just scientifically, omega-3s are fantastic for you. So the more omega-3s you can get, um, like walnuts basically are like nature's Prozac. So these are things that I used to cope. <laughs> walnuts, <laughs> books and walnuts. <laughs> I just, that's a great sound bite. All right, I need something, something deep out here. Well, that's not it, but I still wanna use this color cause I like it. This is this like delicious red brown. And it makes my eyes pop. Look at that, look at that. Mm. 
Luckily, the seats go back. Drinking red, red wine. Okay, I pulled out Viewtopsy from Hindash because I need some deep darks here for my outer corner. Loving that. My phone doesn't even recognize me because I look so fabulous. Favorite YouTube content non-beauty related? I found lots of great channels through you. Well, okay, so these things are always top of mind for me and so I feel like I talk about them all the time. And so <laughs> it's possible that I don't have anything new to offer you. Still sticking with my Isamea palette here. I'm gonna go in with this one right here. Get, ooh, she cracking, she cracking release the Kraken. But some of my faves currently, I can binge Naomi John all day long. I think that she is just fantastic and fabulous. She's kind of our new younger, I mean younger than me, I mean like, you know, version of Jenna Marbles. She's just very, very funny. She makes lighthearted content, but she's also very aware of what's going on. She's just an intelligent, multifaceted human being, incredibly talented singer. I enjoy commentary channels. I love Jarvis Johnson. He has like several channels. A lot of these are Twitch streamers and then they upload on YouTube. Very mindless content a lot of times. Not always, but like Jordan Adika. You know, he's, He's making some pretty mindless content, he knows it, but it's a lot of fun to watch still. By the way, the reason that I pulled out Viewtopsy is not because a dark shade doesn't exist in this palette, it's because I didn't want to put black on my eyes today. I just felt like that would really overwhelm the whole thing. I am going to dip into the Linda Hallberg here and go in with Flair. I'm just gonna use something fluffy to do that. Finding balance in life Friends, family, work, chores, school, etc. I have a, I have a few techniques for this. One is imagine if you got like suddenly sick and had to go to the hospital or the emergency room, God forbid, you know, and it just basically like something disrupted your life and took a huge chunk of your time away. Like, would everything fall apart? No. Then you have time for a nap. <laughs> you probably have time for a nap. And a lot of times when we think that everything is horrible, just taking a nap for like an hour and a half can make all the difference in the world. Like you think you need a week off when really, you, and I don't wanna be that person who's like, you don't need a week off, you just need a nap. But like sometimes I think I need a week off when I wouldn't know what to do with myself with a week off. But I do need a nap. <laughs> Again, it's not necessarily these grand swooping gestures, but also I think a lot of people, not so much me, suffer from a people-pleasing mindset of thinking, and probably rightfully so, that everyone needs them and everyone needs them to be a certain way, like needs them to be kind of a very specific version of themselves for every role in their life, right? And that they can't let any of those things go to seed because they don't want to disappoint somebody else. And sure, like you don't want to active, Maybe you don't want to actively disappoint people. I personally love a good strategic disappointment, but what color should we use? Oh, the green one, obviously. I'm gonna go in with Crush here on top of everything. This is from the Shimmer Saga. Did, was it absolutely necessary? No. <laughs> is it a lot of fun? Yeah. And to just like release yourself from from that and not necessarily like, you know, snap your fingers, suddenly those roles don't exist for you or that they're not that important. Like, trust me, I know, I have a child. He doesn't understand self, like me needing to take, you know, time for self care. He's very like, I am child, accommodate me, whatever. Everybody's got little gremlin hands in their life of one persuasion or another that exist just to steal our time, even if they're giving us very cute things in return, but also, Ask yourself, what makes you happy? And I'm not saying that, you know, you have to just go and eliminate things that don't make you happy or that if you only do things that are happy, you can't be overwhelmed because you can still be overwhelmed even if everything in your life is really good. It's still a lot. <laughs> you know, I can fill my life to the brim or overflow with fantastic things and I'm still overwhelmed because it's overflowing. So just bear in mind that like, your ultimate allegiance is to yourself because everybody else, their allegiance is to themselves too. 
you know, unless you have a child, in which case, but still to yourself because your kid needs you to be the best version of yourself in order to be the best version of themselves. Working on myself is actually like donating my time back to Simon in a roundabout way because he wants, you know, a cool, strong, energized, present mom. I'm putting some of that green underneath too. Boop. Oh, another thing that Naomi John does, I know that I said that you asked for non-beauty content, but like she does actually do some really cool beauty look. She started out, I think, as a beauty creator, but she's not really anymore. All right, we're gonna use a wave of flash from LH Cosmetics, fr freshly sharpened as it turns out. And I'm going to do like a good, a good little smoky rim here. Mm. Does this qualify as angry eyes per Hannah Louise Poston's recent video? I've layered lots and lots of mucky things like if there's anything i wish that the ismea palette like i wish that i had tried it before going and meeting up with her because i would have gotten that for her instead of the nars palette that i got her not that the nars palette's not gorgeous but like this is just so so hannah loving it loving it just smashing everything on my face all at once sorry guys i'm really not in the mood to talk about makeup today like i know a lot of people ask me they're just like oh you know what's the best single eyeshadow formula. I'm just not in the mood to talk about that right now. I want to talk about other things. My relationships with other creators. <laughs> That's what somebody says. Just your relationships with other creators. This was a topic of conversation today that came up on my anonymous question prompt. It's called NGL. I'm thinking it stands for I'm not gonna lie. And it allows people to submit anonymous questions like old school Tumblr style. And I personally think that it's a lot of fun. People are a lot more honest and it made for some cool conversation starters. And one of them was, let me just read it to you. <laughs> let me just read it to you because I, I want to, I want to put it in their words. Why do you name drop so much? Do you feel like your loyalty is easy to buy just by the owner of a brand tagging you in some memes? Just gonna go ahead and say that's a salty tone. Like there's there's no getting around that. That's not my interpretation. That's a salty tone. And my answer is really simple. And it is just that like, this is a very lonely space to work in, especially when you're first starting out. So when you find people who inspire you and then you find that you have things in common and you actually make friends in the space, it feels incredible like to actually have friends in the space. And we don't have an office or something that we go to where we can just convene and easily like make friends on a very like low pressure basis. The other thing that I think people forget is just that I'm not a kid. And so like I'm 35 and I'm around the same age as a lot of creators who have become brand owners. And so, I don't know, man, it just, it just happens that you make friends with very cool people who inspire you. And I formed some really, really strong friendships. And I also really like memes. <laughs> some of y'all really get it. Like some of y'all, I will like, will tag me in memes and I'm like, how do you understand my humor so perfectly? Like scalpel precision. And then, you know, I will choose whether or not to repost it. But sometimes they're so weird that I can only send them to a couple of people. And I don't want to incriminate anybody, but you know, I have specific memes that I will tag specific people in and vice versa, because that's our way of relating to each other when we're all working alone in a room, <laughs> okay? There's no like Slack channel for YouTubers. Maybe there should be, but it's just nice to have friends sometimes. I'm using the kind of like, iridescent blue leaning clear that's in here. It's just an intoxicating shade the way that the light hits it. So I have taken a whole new idea of doe eyes because I've always liked dressing up as a deer and try not to project any kinks onto that. I liked making antlers when I was in college and I've just always really liked deer. So um, just take a white pencil and instead of doing my inner, like my waterline, I just do right here. And it gives you like, it makes you actually look like a deer. You can even do it like right there too, but should I, should we do that? Ooh, neat. It's hard to get it in there. I've got that mole right there, but right under my eyeliner. So this is the LH Cosmetics little white pencil crayon thing. And she is quite long wearing. 
once you get her done. All right, I'm gonna do my brow product other than the pencil and my mascara and stuff. And then we will come back and we'll do cheeks, we'll answer some more questions, we'll do some lips, and we'll do some updated reviews. that I can't do my brow product yet because I want to put on blush and I don't want the blush to get into wet brow products. So let's go ahead and choose some kind of blush here. Maybe we work from Monochromance. Yeah, right, right in here because they look really, whoopsies, they look really bright, but they're super sheer. I haven't powdered yet either, so that will help immensely, I think. Oh, we're gonna use bronzer and contour and stuff too. That Merit bronzer was just not enough. Miss Rachel Ellen Rose asks, top three fashion inspo people at the moment. This is a great question always, but I feel particularly equipped to answer it right now because I have been feeling really, really inspired. I'm not sure I can name three, but I will start with the one that comes to mind. And that is Amy from Tibby. And this was a an Ingrid recommendation, actually. So Tibby is, you know, a high-end designer brand. And Amy, I'll put her name on the screen because I don't remember her last name, but she has started this class that she does on Wednesdays on the Tibby Instagram that are like style classes. And it's all about what they call creative pragmatism. The creative pragmatic is the, you know, the woman on the street who you see who like, you can't really put your finger on why, but she just is like killing it in her outfit, you know? And you're just like, it's, it's, I can't put my finger on the, th it's, it's like her outfit's not wearing her and the personality of the person wearing it. It's all of those things coming together. So the classes are about the fundamentals of putting together outfits and they just excite me and they start like broadening my brain and the way that I think about my own wardrobe because I think that I shop too much. I mean, I know I shop too much, but I think that the reason I shop too much is because I am inspired by particular outfits on people who are, you know, really, really good at dressing themselves. And I go, oh, well, it must just be that item that I need in my wardrobe in order to have a look that looks that cool, you know? When really, I can tell when it's time to buy something for myself because my gut says so. It's like, yes, that's the one. You know what I mean? And like, I don't even have to think about it. There's a difference between those two feelings and it really is the pieces that I feel that gut reaction to that end up being the pieces that make me feel the most like myself when I put them on. And it's not necessarily about getting something new. It's actually about applying the kind of sense of inhabiting your own body. <laughs> that she exhibits along with her assistant. I'm not really sure what her name is, but in the videos, but the way that they describe it, it's not so much about mimicking the outfits. It's about the fundamentals of like understanding your own style, balancing a look out by, you know, having like these certain elements of like friction or these descriptors that you use for your own style and things like that, that help you to use your wardrobe in a way that feels the most like you, where you just feel like you're, you know, like you always feel like that that girl. <laughs> it's not about things that other people have. It's literally about not what other people have. It's about you and like what you have and putting it together your way and finding, you know, tapping into that sense of, of style and of, of truth. You know what I mean? Of like a, a true sense of yourself. So I would say that that is like one of my biggest inspos right now. All right, a little clear brow gel here. I'm actually gonna take a question from NGL here. How do I stop being a people pleaser? I need a new job because my current one makes me angry or sad most days. And I'm afraid of how me leaving will impact my boss slash company. How do I be selfish? Well, as an expert on being selfish, I am an expert on being selfish. I am. And I'm proud to say that. I know that that's alienating for a lot of people because you're just like, no, that's what I was brought up. Being taught is the worst possible thing you can be called as selfish. One of the first fundamentals in being selfish, what are we gonna call this? We're gonna call this, what's the opposite of toxic? Benevolent selfishness or beneficial selfishness. I would say benevolent selfishness because what you're doing 
is you are investing in becoming the best version of yourself so that you can be more present and give your gifts to the world in a capacity that is more helpful to them. So in people pleasing, you're actually suppressing your own uh, contribution to the world as an individual because your individuality is your biggest strength, right? So if you're spending your time trying to accommodate other people, not only are you losing sight of your own instincts, like you're losing sight of your own kind of self-validation, that means that you're also relying on other people for the validation of your self-worth. And that's never going to give you enough. It's never gonna give you what you need. I think that they call it like kind of an anxious attachment style, you know, to your work or whatever. And so what you have to do is be selfish in, with a mind towards investing all of that energy that you are putting into people pleasing in order to get the approval from your peers and saying, you know, it matters a million times more that I like who I am and therefore I need to take that energy and in that moment, stop and decide to reinvest that like anxious energy back into yourself and go, what do I need? And don't be afraid to ask yourself what you need because what you are is you're becoming a better contributor to the world when you do that. Being selfish isn't in and of itself being selfish because you're becoming a better version of yourself and people need that from you. Being a people pleaser is actually kind of an easy way out, you know, because you're not thinking for yourself at the end of the day. All right, let's actually finally put this freaking blush on khaki. And my actual personal practices of being selfish, first of all, like I said, give your energy back to yourself in those moments where you realize that you're giving it to somebody else that you're only doing it in pursuit of their approval not because you would do it no matter what kind of thing, but also give your time back to yourself. I can't even explain to you how good it felt the first time after I had had a baby that I got like an hour to myself, like I finally convinced myself that I deserved it, an hour to myself and just went and did a yoga practice for the first time postpartum. I was like, holy crap, whoa, I have not inhabited my body in months, you know, or weeks or whatever it was. Realizing like what a better version of myself I became just in that moment of like remembering how good that felt. So giving your time back to yourself, what it does is it says, to, it says to, from you to your like inner true self, you are valuable, I care about you, you deserve time. And also understand, like I said earlier, everyone else is putting themselves first. No one's gonna put you first. So you have to put yourself first. You have to fight for what you need. And in order to fight for what you need, you have to ask yourself a very, very difficult question, which is, am I happy? Sounds like you've already done that. But some people are really, really scared to ask if they're happy because they know the answer is terrifying. They know the answer is no. And if they admit that they're not happy, then they have to admit that like, they have to do something about it. And that's rough. So I know that that can be really scary, but it's, really worth it because my life would look very, very different if I hadn't done that. I would be very unhappy. I'd be a very, very unhappy person if I were like still working in an office and just, you know, trying to please people that I don't really care about their opinions, but I do feel like an office environment makes you feel like that's what you're supposed to be doing is constantly accommodating everyone around you and making sure that you're not hurting anybody's feelings. Meanwhile, a bunch of people are hurting your feelings all the time with reckless abandon, you know? Like if that's not for you, then that's not for you. All right, little color theory moment here, right? So I was noticing that my face was looking pink face versus my eyes, which are doing this kind of like red orange thing. And so I want a little more bronzer, bronzery moment. But things are looking pink face also because it was a really lightweight complexion product that I used. And so we are ending up with like less coverage. So I'm gonna go for just a little more powder. I like that I'm everybody's resident expert on how to be selfish. It's kind of like how to do nothing. You know, it really flies in the face of what we think is expected of us. All right, I'm gonna give this a spritz here. I'm gonna use the Tula because I like it very much. The Signature Glow Refreshing and Brightening Face Mist. Something I've been doing. Mmm, mmm, it smells so good. Mmm, 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 mmm. I love it. All right, I'm gonna pull the hair down here. I do think my brows are a little bit wild looking. No, 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 break this line up just a little. We're gonna go with the Beauty Pie 
Naked Peach Gloss. I'm going to do my khaki lip liner here. <laughs> I feel like it's like a little much. I need to make some adjustments. Maybe I'll answer a question while I do some miscellaneous adjustments here. <laughs> all right, here's a lighthearted one. <laughs> while, while I do all of my little finishing touches. Topic, please share thoughts on Gemini. I need to know as a Gemini who watches every video. Well, first of all, guys, make sure that you bear in mind, you know, the entire chart because your sun sign isn't the only thing that matters, but I love a Gemini. So Geminis are ruled by Mercury and Mercury, as we know, is all about communication and words. By the way, Virgos are also ruled by Mercury. So, you know, if you are like, wait, that sounds like me, you know, Virgos and, and Geminis are similar in that sense. Geminis also, I have found two big things about Geminis in my life. One, they're incredibly generous. They're like the most generous people I've ever met, like to the point where they would give you the shirt off their backs. Like they'd rather be poor than like the people around them ever like suffer for a moment. And the other thing is they will have, and this is another sort of Virgo tendency, but, uh, but Geminis are like even more so I feel like. They have to have all like all the information on something and and it means that they'll deep dive on really weird stuff. Like they're the kinds of people who follow a rabbit hole on the internet and so they can be an authority on something and it's what they're curious about. It's not everything, but they make great journalists because it's almost like digging up dirt in some sense. And for some people, you know what I mean? It's like getting the tea. <laughs> they kind of want the tea, but also it's about being an authority, knowing the truth, an insatiable pursuit of the truth. Those kinds of people who, if you're like, yo, I heard so-and-so like in the news or something, they'll be like, oh, you don't know the half of it. <laughs> they'll like lay it down on you. And also I find that the um, the Geminis in my life are like very visual. They, they tend to be people who like express themselves in, um, in makeup or in their outfits or in um, their art or they're just, they tend to be a little bit more creative, but it just, they like to express themselves from a visual standpoint. That's also how they, they learn really well. That was a lot better. I'm using the crater shade here. I'm just kind of making this matte a little deeper here and refining the shape. They're also super glib. Like they're just smart asses. Like they're the funniest people in the world. I have never met a Gemini that like, I don't know, maybe, maybe a Sagittarius could go hit for hit with them, but I would not want to be on either of their bad side. I am not super, super quick and glib. Kate the Great is a Gemini, okay? That should give you an idea of like, quick on the draw, really great with words, knows how they feel, great at expressing it. I mean, think about her turn of phrase. She can get on a uh, YouTube live and be her true, authentic, unedited self. That's why I don't do lives. It's because I blurt things up and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> that's not what I meant kind of thing, you know? I have a Gemini moon. Like, I think that that's why I relate to Geminis. I do also like words. I'm a big, you know, big wordsmith. And then my mother's a Virgo. So, you know, I get the, I love Virgos. <laughs> I love Virgos. Um, I, I get the mercury of it all. And I have an appreciation for the, I feel like almost dark energy sometimes of the shadow side of a Gemini because Geminis have a really, really like dark sense of humor when they're in the mood for it. And like, that's also my sense of humor. So love Geminis, love Geminis. But also they can be, they can be wild, you know? Donald Trump's a, a Gemini, Kanye West is a Gemini. So. As with any sign, these things can go many ways. <laughs> Okay, guys, I think that that's the vibe. Like what I really needed to do here was get that darkness on the outer corner so that I felt like myself again. But I did what I came here to do, which was to use almost all of the greens in this palette. I did not use every single one of them because like this lime right here, it wasn't what I wanted today. I wanted it to be a little bit more like of a muted green. And I also used the green, which is called this is a crush out of the Shimmer Saga here. And I feel like it gave me just something really, really cool at the end of the day, you know? And I did focus on kind of muting my cheeks down a little bit, even though I wanted a bronzy look, I did end up going in with, uh, you guessed it, Pat McGrath Flirtatious Divine Blush. And I also kind of 
muted down the brightness under my eyes because after I did this like doe eye moment, I realized that everything looked a little bit more fluorescent. Like it's gonna kind of draw your eye to the light parts of my face. And so I'm actually really glad that the Kulfi here is such a close match to my complexion instead of being super brightening because that white pencil is white. So, you know, quick and dirty, refreshed reviews slash first impressions here. This is, it just continues to impress me. I, like, I feel like it's my job to get to know this palette really well because it feels like a symphony that I need to get to know every instrument in, you know, in order to fully appreciate what it has to offer. And I have only begun to scr scratch the surface. It's so awesome. But if you're not into kind of spooky eyes, it's also really hard to get away from spooky eyes. But like I said, I want to go ahead and just show you all this. This shade right here, it's called Kuprum, I think. Kuprum. Not sure what that means, but it's this one. And it's the most, honestly, like the most tame shade in the palette probably. But like on brown eyes, that shade is absolutely bomb.com. And I'm, I mean, obviously some people with brown eyes can have very cool undertones and maybe not with that. That's, it's quite warm. It kind of goes copper, but you take that kind of pinky shade very, very lightly from the Shimmer Saga and you go on top of that and it gives like, this is, this is like one of my favorite effects to do on my eyes right now. It's just dramatic enough. And then when you get close to it, you start to see the way that the glitter shifts in the light. So that has been my go-to, but like I won't, I, I had been promising you guys the greens lately so much that I just needed to do it. I needed to show it to you. So the tool has nothing to write home about. It's, it's just a skin tint. I don't think anybody, like I said, needs to run out and buy it. If you are looking for a good quality skin tint that has some probiotic benefits to it and stuff like that, it's fine. Like if you're already at Ulta and you're just like, man, I just want to, you know what I mean? Like, sure. But I do like the sunny days better from Tower 28 and it does have a little more coverage. It's a little bit lighter weight on the skin, a tiny bit more realistic of a skin finish. So it's going to be a little longer wearing and the shade range is better. So, you know, I, I do think that that one's better, but they are extremely similar. The Merit Bronzer Stick, I don't think that this was the right or the best maybe use case for it to show what it has to offer because last night I used it on a bare face, you know, that's where it really shined on me. So I think that like, you know, we'll use it obviously again in another video. Maybe I'll show you guys my like very, very no makeup makeup look that I've been doing. You guys come up with a name for it so that we don't have to call it like the clean girl look. So that's the vibe today, guys. This has been... Uh, a wonderful makeup playtime. Thank you guys for submitting your questions, your requests, your suggestions, things like that. I appreciate you guys so much. If you did enjoy this, do give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye!